Welcome back to the Giant Monster Games 2017 Advent Calendar. Today is day number 19, which means we are almost to the top 10 decks, but today is not a top 10 deck. It is Vampires. I know a bunch of you guys voted for Vampires in the competition, or Guest Vampires, not necessarily voted. Guest Vampires. It is not in the top 3, but it is not even in the top 10, actually. It's 19. Anyways, the point of Vampires, for people that don't know what a Vampires deck is, it is a tribal deck around Vampires, so we're trying to play high value Vampires, such as Gifted Aetherborn and Vampire Nighthawk, which both have Death Touch and Life Link, so we can swing in willy-nilly, we don't really care, and if our opponent decides to swing in, we can block and kill stuff. It's super fun for us. And then we are going to play some stuff to give our Vampires extra kicking power, such as Stensima Masquerade and Stormkirk Captain, which give our Vampires plus one plus one one counters or just plus one plus one in general and generally first strike so when we swing with our death touchers we get to do damage first or when we block with our death touchers we get to do damage first killing whatever we potentially block and that is the entire deck as I was saying it's a vampire tribal deck we are playing vampires and doing vampire like things such as draining life I guess if you want to see an entire deck deck up in the top right hand corner up there there is a link you can go and watch the entire deck and some other gameplay of the deck and if you want to pick this deck up for MDGO there's a link below this video where you can go and do that it's a Supports the channel and it is a really good cheap deck to get an empty Joe with. Anyways, let's throw it over to Adrian where he will try and get through an entire match. Here we go. We are playing some vampires today, and this is actually a pretty solid opening hand. You don't normally get a lot of uh, multicolored lands. Uh, normally, we need access to black black on turn two, so that is quite important to us. And we're waiting on our opponent to see if they want to go down to six cards or not. Um, obviously, keeping a four land hand is kind of on the rocks, not always the best. Three lands is like the optimum for almost every single deck out there. Three lands is kind of what you want to go for. Four lands is okay, not necessarily a snap keep, but because we have a turn two and turn three under turn four play, I think we're going to go for it. And we can play this tapped. We're okay with it coming into play tapped. Because, and it's also a Swamp Mountain, which is also really nice, because then that means Dragon Cell Summit comes in untapped. And we are playing against a Bant Color deck. Interesting. Well, we then play a Gifted Aetherborn. Gifted Aetherborn, always a good card to play right away. Because Gifted Aetherborn is, well, I mean, it has Life Link and Death Touch. It's 2 3. I, what am I saying? It's, it is just a good general all around black card. <laughs> And what is this? Enters the battlefield tapped unless you have control two or more basic lands. It is the green-white version of this guy. Which is fine. I mean, our opponent has a bunch of stuff. Uh, does our opponent... Why is this tapped? Why is this tapped? Did our opponent play something? And I don't know of it. Our opponent tapped it for some reason? Not really sure. <laughs> Apparently our opponent's doing something that I am not aware of. Well, in response, we are going to play Stensima Masquerade. Which is red, mono black, black. And then we're gonna swing in, go to combat, attack with this guy, which means he gets first strike and he's gonna get a plus one, plus one counter, making him a 3 4, putting him outside of bolt range. Not that bolt is a problem for us. We're playing against a deck that does not have bolt in it. At least as far as I know, we're not playing, because Bant Colors has. Uh, we're more likely to have something either countered or path to exiled or condemned. That's kind of what we need to be paying attention for. And what comes down? It is Kodama's Reach. So, ramp of some sort? Okay, well that's the thing that happens. I feel like our opponent's deck is not as fast as it could be. And he reveals a uh, island and a forest. <laughs> sure. That's fine for us. Go to our turn, and we're going to need to play something. Uh, I think we can play the mountain at this point. And I think I kind of want to just play Stormkirk Captain. I mean, the other option is to play Paragon. The problem with Paragon, though, is... I mean, it's more efficient in the ways of mana, but I think Stormkirk Captain is going to be better, technically. Mm, technically. Because it's going to give this guy immediately a plus one, plus one, which is good. And then next turn when we swing with this guy, it's going to be... I didn't attack. Didn't attack. <laughs> Stupid me. Give our opponent a fighting chance, I guess. Ah! Fumbling keys is never fun. That's the one thing about playing Paper Magic. And why I play Paper Magic more, I don't play Paper Magic more, I should say. I actually play a lot of MTGO. But why I enjoy paper, playing Paper Magic more is you get to each creature you control with one more counter, it has first strike. Neat. Um, so yeah, when you're playing Paper Magic, you can just go, go to attack. I swing with these guys. Where you can't fumble keys in Paper Magic is not a thing that happens. So, okay, well, it's going to our turn. Which is fine. 
We got into all the mountains. We got into like all of the lands, which is a little bit scary for us, to be honest. And unfortunately, actually not unfortunate at all. I think this is actually gonna be perfectly fine. I think what we do though is we play Paragon. And or we can play Olivia. I think Paragon's probably better. Paragon is probably better in a pinch because it makes things bigger and then we can just swing in for more damage. Technically. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where we're gonna go. And then now we're gonna go to combat properly. Swing with all creatures. Because our opponent well, our opponent's not gonna block. They might have some they might have some combat tricks. It's possible. Um, do they have combat tricks? No, they're gonna block though the three three. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, maybe they do have a combat trick. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Uh, well, that's the thing that happens. So, our opponent puts a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Now he has a 3-2 first strike, so they're going to trade. We're going to trade here, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Mind you, this guy still gets another counter, which I'm fine with. And then we're shipping to our opponent's turn. So, we're going to need to play Olivia. Olivia is something that is going to need to happen. So our opponent is playing this weird, uh, different, weird, different, weird counters deck. So this is kind of like the Bant version of the 1-1 one, one counters deck we played before, except it has different creatures that are doing different things. Uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about this guy. Opponent decides to scoop and go to sideboard. Okay. Now, the question is, what do we play against other, other creature-based decks? I'm really tempted to throw in Pyroplasm because we can use it to sweep the board. The other one is actually Harsh Mentor. Harsh Mentor needs to come in. I think we actually pull out Olivia, put in some Doom Blades. Actually, no, we don't need to put in Doom Blades. We have Victim of Knights, which are equally good. Actually, no, Doom Blades are better. Doom Blades are easier than Victim of Knights. We're going to take out two Victim of Knights for that. And I think that's what we run it back as. The other option as well is technically Evil Presence. Because our opponent is playing a budget mana base, we can really screw them over by just forcing that black mana. Um, but do we want to do that? I think we're just going to run them down. I think we're, we're going to try and run them down rather than actually uh, take away their mana options. This is always a good way of dealing with uh, decks like this, especially when you're playing against another budget deck. If you want to lose friends, play Evil Presence on their budget lands. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And now we start game two. Our opponent, I'm assuming, is going to play first. Only makes sense. I mean, again, the only time I can reasonably think of if you want to play second, if you are having the choice. Uh, hold on. By the way, what are, we, what are we doing here? What are we looking at? We're not the best opening hand, but I'm going to keep it because it's not terrible at the same time. The only times is if you're playing Manalist Dredge um, or a Dredge deck in general, you may want to play second very rarely. And the other one is, um, what is it? There's another deck out there that like can be like, ah, I can play second. I'm okay with that. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I think we just run out Smoldering Marsh tapped. I mean, in theory, we could run something out that would not not come in tapped, and then we could potentially bolt our opponent's stuff. But I mean, I don't think our opponent's gonna be playing anything that's gonna come in untapped, or anything that we're gonna need to bolt right away. We didn't see Birds of Paradise last time. We didn't see anything really to ramp our opponent. I'm not really sure what our opponent's playing. I'm not, again, other than weird token strategies, I don't really know what our opponent is actually planning on doing. So we're just going to let him run with it, and we're going to see how it goes. I mean, that's all I can really say. We're going to find out. Hopefully they have a turn three play. I mean, no turn two. Kodama's Reach is not a good... I feel like our opponent's deck... If I'm going to critique our opponent's deck a little bit right now, which, I mean... Not, not something you should always do, but I think one of the things our opponent should really be considering right now is a better curve. Having, like, for especially a deck like his, like, going to turn four and not playing anything and you're not playing control uh, is scary. It's flat out scary. I mean, if he doesn't have a way of countering this, which he's not because he just dumped all of his mana, that's really scary. You should you should be aiming for what, turn one and turn two plays for curve. Um, even if they are something as simple as like lightning bolts or in his case path to exiles um, or turn two stuff. There's a bunch of good turn two things. I think he should be doing that. Yeah, because doing this like crazy trying to dump a bunch of mana. Prophet of Crufix. By God. I can deal with that. By the way, I'm not really that concerned about Prophet of Crufix. 
Um, his stuff does come in untapped, which is, is a thing. Uh, I think what we do is we throw down a mountain. We bolt his Prophet of Crufix. Actually, do we bolt it on our turn or we bolt it on his turn? I think we bolt it on his turn. This turn, we just play the Stormkirk Captain. And then we swing in for three in the air. Go, go, Gadget, swinging for three in the air. And then we're probably going to bolt the Prophet of Crufix on his turn. Um, force him to respond to it. I know he has a thing that gives it plus one counters. Which may be his idea of a response. And is that a path to exile? It is a path to exile. Do I bolt in response? I'm tempted to bolt in response. But at the same time, I kind of don't want to. I don't think we're going to. We are going to fetch up a land. It can be... Uh, I have mountains in my hand, so might as well be a swamp. Uh, I have swamps in my hand, so might as well be a mountain. And I think we just ship it to our opponent. The other thing we can do is next turn we can Olivia uh, turn this into a... Give this one plus one and then steal it. That's also a very valid option. <laughs> um, something we can also do. Opponent's going to play Evolving Wilds and crack it. Again, I know I've done this a few times, but really you should be using uh, Path to Exile on your opponent's turn. Search your library for a basic line, put it into the battlefield, tapped, then shovel. Bolster one. So we need to actually blow up this thing. Or at least try to, because he's going to put a 1-1 counter on this guy. Well, if we can get rid of it... Uh, nope, so there's the counter thing right there. Which is fine. Not the end of the world. 3, 4, 5... Yeah, so it's still going to do 3 damage to it. It still survives, which is not the end of the world. So next turn, I think we're going to have to play Gifted Aetherborn and then also Olivia. And we're going to have to use Gifted Aetherborn to potentially just kill this guy. Um, not blocking because I don't really care at this point. And it also has protection from red, so that's also a thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, Smoldering Marsh. We do have a lot of lands, which is nice. Do we have enough to play both these guys? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. We do. So let's run them all out. You, you. And then run out Olivia. He needs to deal with Olivia, otherwise we're going to... Oh. Oh, please. What is this? Enters the battlefield, draw a card. Um... Oh, yeah. He can play cards as they have flash. Neat. Okay. Well, that's the thing that happens. Sure. <laughs> um, if that's what you need to do, you do it. And then we are going to play Olivia. I haven't seen him do any other counter stuff yet, so I'm assuming he doesn't have any counters. Assuming? I could be wrong. But Olivia is what he... he Olivia, he needs to get rid of Olivia. He has to get rid of her, otherwise next turn we're going to steal his Prophet of Crufix. So that's a thing. He's paying costs. They say he's paying cost. Okay, so it is Beast Within. Beast Within. Getting rid of Olivia. And I think we just ship it to our opponent. He needs to give it protection, otherwise we're going to just do this thing where we tack in and kill his profit. What does our opponent have? I mean, the other option could have been as well is to... I guess maybe not. Maybe that's not really an option. I said we could have held up Olivia and then tried to use her ability at the same time. So, what is this? Each player reveals the top card of his library. You may reveal a card. Into, oh, you may put that reveal card into the owner's library. Each player draws a card. Neat. And a Johnny. Ooh. You gain 100 life. That's a hard one to... <laughs> That's a hard one to take down. So our bonus deck is much faster. So, man, he has a lot of basic lands, which is a better guess for this turn for him. So I think we actually do. For next turn, we need to put in more conditional removal. Lightning bolts are not going to cut it. Lightning bolts are not going to do it. Distribute three one counters. There goes some things that are getting bigger. Uh, again, he can't really swing in. We have first strike and death touch with lifelink. So, not really an option for our opponent this time. Well, we're just drawing all the all of the lands, so we might as well play land and then run it to our opponent. See if he has anything to say. And no, I'm not going to attack, because I would much rather keep up the Death Toucher. And I don't really want to run with this guy, because he can just block and kill stuff. Rampant Growth. So he's playing, like, he's playing this crazy Bant ramp into creatures. I mean, Prophet of Crufix is fantastic. Because you get to untap all your lands and creatures. Oh no, just uh, yeah, all your creatures and lands during each other player's turn. And then creatures you control, you can play with Flash. So you can play them literally whenever you want. So he's going to reveal each of our libraries. He reveals a what on top. So VampireKnighthood.com, top on front, top of mine. And the thing that gets counters on his. Does he put them into the graveyard? We'll find out. Right after these messages, we'll find out. Looks like the answer is yes. And then we both draw cards, or is it you draw cards? 
Um, if you don't, oh, he reveals and then we both draw cards. So that's fun. And this is what, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal an aura, creature, or planeswalker card among them. If you do put that into your hand, put the rest in the bottom of your library order. So he gets to reveal, he reveals a, oh, nice, Nissa. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. Other creatures you control, trample. That's exciting. That's exciting for our opponent in a lot of ways. And there is Nissa coming down, which it's not a creature yet. That's nice. Nice for us. I'm happy to see that. So we are kind of just in a holding position. I really like drawing all these lands. These lands make me really happy. I mean, like, we could literally cast anything we want at this point. That's very exciting. Ship it to our opponent. <laughs> We're not doing anything else. Yeah. Shipping it through. Not doing anything on our turn. Our opponent does the thing where he reveals... We reveal a Stormkirk Noble, and he reveals a Duskwatch Recruiter. We both get to draw them. Oh, we sorry, we drew a we reveal a Stormkirk Noble, which is not good at this. I mean, if we drew this first turn, that'd be awesome. If we didn't, no, not good. Not good at all. So, doing the thing again. Neat. Uh, another Stormkirk Captain. So Storm Crit this guy, and he reveals something else. So we actually get to draw the Storm Crit Captain, which is nice. I mean, I will happily take more creatures <laughs> because uh, we just have a bunch of lands. And he actually plays his Outlast guy. What was the other card he actually drew? He drew, uh, oh, this guy, the thing that draws more creatures. So he's playing like a Zoo deck, Bant Zoo, or Bant. Is it humans? No, it's just Bant Zoo. Well, not even really Zoo, it's like Bant mid-range. Zoo implies that it's aggro, but it's definitely a mid-range deck. There goes the counters. Counters on all kinds of stuff. And does he swing in? I mean, if he swings in, we just immediately kill stuff. So he can't really? I mean, he could. Because you don't have... You don't have first strike or anything. So I guess I just... Choose blockers? Why can't I choose blockers? Uh, declare blockers, have choose blockers. Oh, they have flying. They have flying, so I can't actually block them. Never mind, I found it. Not a glitch, just me not reading the fact that it has flying. Well, that's a problem for me. That is a lot of damage. So we need an answer, hopefully in the form of Vampire Nighthawk. If I have Vampire Nighthawk or Victim of Night is nice. Or Doomblade is nice. There's a lot of things that are really nice right now. Lots of things that are really nice right now. <laughs> um, do we draw them? We do draw Doomblade, which is nice. Like, actually nice. What's giving things flying, by the way? Uh, it's this thing. Other creatures you control with one-one counters have flying. So, I think what we do is we run out a bunch of stuff. We run out a Stormcrit Captain. We run out a Stormkirk Noble, which is what we just ran out, <laughs> for the record. And then I think we run it to our opponent's turn. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to blow up his... Falconer at the beginning of combat. Assuming he doesn't play anything. If he plays anything, his one card in hand, probably not. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Again, haven't seen any remo or any counters in this deck, so I'm just kind of going ham on. Um, you know what? Just to be safe, let's go like this. Um, we just use both these. So we're gonna remove the Falconer, so his stuff loses flying. Still has trample, unfortunately. And each player reveals top card of their library. And we reveal a mountain. <laughs> Not at all what we need. Not even close. Not even close. But we still get to kill this thing. Things no longer have flying, which is nice. And so he could, in theory, can he still, does he still get enough damage in? 6-6, six, six, trample. Uh, this does not have trample. Does it? No. Other creatures have trample. Uh, so at this point, he doesn't have lethal on board, but he does have a lot of damage on board, uh, which means we need another way of getting rid of... We actually... Really, what we needed to do is get rid of Profic or Crufix. So that is a thing. The nice thing is, can we have Death Touch here? We can just immediately kill stuff. We don't need to worry about blocking all of the damage, <laughs> just some of the damage. Hmm, it is a, it is a curious one. Distributing counters that may actually be enough to be lethal. Maybe. Maybe. 
because the thing we need to block, so what is this, six? So that's gonna be three. Let's see if he does swing in. Because it's what, three? Oh, he's gonna swing it just with this guy? Hmm. You don't have trample though. And you are indestructible, so even doing lethal damage to you doesn't get rid of you. And death touch doesn't kill you either. So we need to block with something small and unassuming. I think the beast from the beast within is going to be the sacrificial lamb in this situation. Sacrificial lamb. There you go. I think if you would have actually swung it with everything. My opponent has disconnected. Ooh. Uh, apparently our opponent is having some problems. So we're going to sit and wait until he comes back. Well, boys and girls, I think we're going to call this one. Unfortunately, I don't have time to, because I'm a little bit behind, by the way, um, to record another match with this deck. I had four games already that uh, fell through. Either they just were not good games, or our opponent dropped out the first match, or a variety of things have happened. So, uh, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed at least one good match, and or one good game, and then um, a half a game where it was getting interesting. I was, I was wondering how I was going to get out of this. I mean, I could rely on drawing into stuff, which is going to be pretty hard. Going to sideboard would have been really good for us against this deck, because now that we know actually what he's doing, we have a lot of creature hate. We, like, took out, we put in a couple Doom Blades for a couple, and took out a couple, like, um, Victim of Night. There we go. Um, so we could have put in more Victim of Night, just to help deal with some of these, like, important creatures, specifically Prophet of Krufix, and uh, probably this guy as well, I guess. Uh, maybe not. Just right now, we'd want to deal with him. Possibly this guy as well. So, we would have been put in some stuff. We would have actually had ways of hating on his deck a little bit more. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that because our opponent, uh, it's now been gone for quite a while. And I'm just not, I can't sit and wait any longer. <laughs> I just, I don't have that time. Anyways, until next time, this has been the Vampire's Deck. Uh, my name is Adrian. Don't forget to game like a giant monster. Thanks for watching the Giant Monster Games Advent Calendar. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more videos just like it. A huge shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. You guys are helping make videos like this. And if you want to pick this deck up, there is a link below with an affiliate link so you can grab this entire deck on MTGO.